welcome back. This is part two of the Practical Cloth Sims series. In this video, we will look at the new pressure feature of Blender 2.82 and later. So let's start with a default cube again. Go in, subdivide a bunch of times, and then go to the physics tab and make this a cloth. So we get the cloth simulation. And then right away down here, we have the pressure feature. Um, gonna switch off gravity for now, so it doesn't fall down. So if I hit spacebar now, nothing happens. And if I switch on pressure and increase the pressure in value here to something like point, uh, five. And now if I hit spacebar, you can see we get this sort of inflatable feature. So what is happening? This new feature applies a pressure to each vertex on the inside, pushing outwards. And this is the effect we get. So we can set a little bit of pressure. And it looks like this. We also get nice wrinkles. Or we can turn the pressure up to like 20. First up with a high pressure, it goes right away at the beginning. And then we have high pressure. What if we turn it up to 100? Blah, it explodes basically. 50? Okay, so this is the pressure feature. The pressure amount is, at, is applied to every vertex of the mesh. So the more vertices you have, the more pressure you get. And this is something you have to keep in mind. For example, let's look at the next feature. What if we want to apply this pressure only to a certain vertex group? We can do that here. So I'm going to go to circle select, pick those vertices on top here, create a new vertex group, assign it, also name it. Then we go back to the simulation here and apply this pressure group. Now we only have pressure on the vertices that we picked up here. And what's gonna happen is it actually floats up. Now you have to think of this as a, a force inside of our mesh that is constantly pushing uh, onto these vertices that we picked here. So we get this, which is kind of interesting. And like I said before, with less pressure, It's still floating up. Let's set the pressure to two. Uh, it's still floating up. And what I want to show you here is if we add more vertices to our vertex group, assign them. Now we, I'm not changing the pressure setting here, but we have more pressure. So we're floating up faster again. This pressure is applied to each vertex. The more vertices you apply it to, the more pressure you have on the inside, or the higher you set this value. Now this is kind of cool looking, especially if we switch on self-collision. Maybe we can fine tune this. No. Add a ground plane. Make the ground plane a collision object. Maybe we can fine tune this pressure value here so that this sort of drags across the floor somehow. Oh, this is not good. I have to put this underneath. So I'm going to set the pressure here to 1.5. Still too strong. One. Why is this always floating up? Oh, because I don't have gravity. Awesome. Uh, 
Okay. So now after playing around with a few numbers here, I have a vertex mass of 0.2. I have only these vertices selected in this uh, group for the pressure. The pressure is set to 8 and now we get this interesting kind of cloth floating, dragging across the floor here. And this is all calculated in real time here. So like I said in the first video, for your final render, you would want to go in here to the cache, set the uh, start and end simulation frame that you want, and then bake. So this is what this looks like now. Sort of like a ghost dragging the cloth across the floor. Okay, uh, next thing I want to talk about with the cloth pressure here is you might be thinking pressure sounds like air pressure, but it's not. For example, if I select a few vertices here and simply uh, delete them, so now we have a hole in our uh, mesh. And if I do, if I now play the cloth simulation, you can see the pressure still works even if I go in here and remove my vertex group. So we have pressure on each vertex. You can see it still works. And now it's flying this way because we have vertices on this side that pressure is applied to, but we don't have the same amount on this side. So now it's floating towards one side. But you would think, well, the air is blowing out this hole here, so we don't really have any pressure. But that's not how this works. The pressure is applied to all the vertices. It's not an air pressure inside of the mesh. Now, one last thing I have to show you because it's just so funny looking. Let's get a monkey in here, Suzanne. Let's go into edit mode, subdivide it. So we have a little bit of uh, mesh for the cloth sim to work with. And now watch what happens when we apply pressure to this, like 20. Um, maybe you know that uh, Suzanne is not manifold mesh because the eyes are actually their own mesh objects. They are not connected to the rest of the mesh. <laughs> now look what happens if I press play. <laughs> I think this is very funny. So not only do the eyeballs pop out right away, but we also get this horrible, freakish looking inflated monkey head. In the next tutorial of this series, we will use the pressure feature to create a hot air balloon, a pillow, maybe some inflatable letters, numbers or logos and a beanbag chair. If you enjoyed this tutorial of the Practical Cloth Sim series, please smash the like button below and consider subscribing if you're new to the channel. I read all the comments, so please drop me a note and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, see you over in the next video.